we're very familiar with. Matter of fact, it's one of our main texts uh, in the beginning of this journey in this particular book, uh, Steps to Personal Revival. Um, this is one of the few passages that he definitely uh, began the journey with, and he began to talk in depth regarding uh, the Holy Spirit. And the reason why we should be constantly asking and praying for the Holy Spirit. And so I praise God for the writer and utilizing this text at the very beginning of this journey. This reminded us, y'all, the reason why we should constantly be praying and asking for the Spirit of living God. Okay, saints of God, uh -huh. the writer declares, Luke declares in the days of old, Dr. Luke. So I say to you, ask and it will, well, Jesus is speaking, Luke's rights regarding what Jesus has said. Jesus declares uh -huh, to the disciples, so I say unto you, and those who are there in the community at that time, in the locale, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him uh -huh, a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts, to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? What a promise, saints of God. The promise is clear. Jesus is clear that our heavenly Father, his Father up in glory will not hold uh -huh, back the Holy Spirit when we ask. God will give. He is faithful to his promise. And we talked about it last week, say, so God, that uh, if the heart is in tune with God, if we're faithful, if we're calling out those unknown, those no, I mean, those known sins, if we're wrestling with God, uh -huh, giving him a whole. And not saying to God, moving forward in life with even our heart towards others, want to do them harm, looking for ways, saying to God, how to get over on other folks. If our heart is pure, y'all. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about a heart that is bent to do what is right and is striving uh -huh, in doing what is right, overcoming sin by the grace of God. If they're moving forward in the spirit of humility and not prideful, the writer is clear, y'all. Uh -huh. God will, will not hold back the Holy Spirit. He is faithful to his promise. Jesus declared his heavenly Father would give uh, his heavenly father will give the holy spirit to them uh, that ask i uh, say bless his holy name and so saints of god before we get into this book this evening let's pray loving father no we just had prayer sorry about that we just had prayer get ready to pray again all right saints of god so let's start our journey once again we're reading the book steps to personal Revival, the beautiful book. I encourage any individuals to read this book. This past week, I or last week, I had opportunity to talk to one of my uh, best friends in ministry and a long-term friend. We started there at Oakwood, and um, he's pastoring up in Northeastern at this time. And I was sharing with the book, and I, and he was like, "Man, I got to get a hold of that book." He definitely wants to uh, utilize this book at his own church. As now, as they're at this time going through a book dealing with the Holy Spirit. But however, say so God, he definitely liked some of the things that this book talked about. I mentioned it to him, man. It was going through some things with him, some of the information in this book. And he was getting fired up when he stopped by my home the other day. And so say so God, I just once again share with you the book. If you don't have it, I recommend that you get it. As a matter of fact, I think I want to use this on my own uh, joint affliction channel but Steps of Christ to Personal uh, Revival. And so say, so God, the writer, recap before we get into our lesson, the writer mentioned um, a few weeks ago that in this particular text we just read for our scripture reading, 
He emphasized uh -huh, the amount of times that the word seek was mentioned, ask as well. I do believe knock. And this is what he says, saints of God, uh -huh, as he emphasized the importance of, of living out this passage we just read, asking God for the Holy Spirit. And as a child of God, uh huh, we should be constantly asking God for the Spirit, uh huh, on our journey. It should be a daily thing. And I'll share with you in a few moments the reason why. So listen to this, y'all. This is this is what I find so interesting. And I like this. He says this right here, and I, and it's a blessing. In these few verses, Jesus used the used the verb ask six times. Then he replaced ask and emphasized it with seek. Six times he, he mentioned ask in the New King James Version Bible. Seek is two times, y'all. And action, and two more times with knock, also a action word. He goes on to say this, y'all. Doesn't he clearly show us that we have to take action in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Uh-huh. The last ask is used in a continuous tense in the Greek. That means that we are to ask only once. Or not to ask only once, but rather to ask continuously, y'all. So it's, it's ongoing. It doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Say it's a guy. Well, matter of fact, you know, you know what I'm saying? He mentioned this right here. He says, look, once we are baptized, many times he talks about that folks may stop, you know, asking for the spirit of living God. Because the Bible says, as he brought out clearly, huh, from the word of God, that once we are baptized, the believer now, uh -huh, the sincere believer, those who have given their hearts to Christ, their whole heart, receive the Holy Spirit. So at baptism, you receive the Holy Spirit. But he says, look, y'all, we got to continue to keep asking. Yesterday anointing is not good enough. We need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit daily. And so he talks about that. He mentioned the reason why and, and on this journey, that why we got to be constantly asking for the bat fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the good news is, saints of God, uh huh. And I love this, uh huh, that God does not leave us in a place of emptiness. Come on, saints of God, uh huh. The Bible declares that He will fill us, He will give us the Holy Spirit, especially those times that we find ourselves in a spiritual drought. God will fill us. Come on, saints of God. And so once again, y'all, we got to continue to ask. It doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying, it, it doesn't stop at baptism once we receive the promise. As many people say, well, I'm anointing, I'm anointed, I got the spirit of living God, spirit of God is dwelling in me once they are baptized. And you know what I'm saying, and they move forward in life, never asking God to fill them or asking for the spirit, or fill them with the spirit of living God, or say, so about asking, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, just continue to keep pushing forward. Well, asking man, the spirit of, for the spirit of the living God. Okay, saints of God, we kind of just get satisfied in that place and we're good. Oh, no, saints of God. He said we must continue to ask. And I like this, saints of God. He said on this journey, uh huh. and I want to call it the journey of sanctification because God is, 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 is molding and shaping us into his image. But for that to take place, we need the spirit of living God in our lives. So once again, he says, saints of God, we got to go beyond saints of God just being comfortable receiving the spirit of God at baptism. This is a daily thing that we need to be asking. And this is what he mentioned, saints of God. Uh huh. He says this here. The apostle Paul really understood Jesus' objective. In his letter to the church in Ephesus, Paul's confirmed in chapter 1 and third, chapter 1, verse 13, that they have been sealed by the Holy Spirit when they became believers. So at baptism, when they took on Christianity, took on Christ, became children of God at baptism now, they were sealed by the Spirit of living God. The Spirit of God has placed, God has placed his seal, uh huh. Use it or, or, or he has placed living God upon them. He has sealed them uh, by his Holy 
spirit. Then he goes on to say this, y'all. He goes on, he says, uh-huh. He encouraged them to be strong in the spirit, not weak in the spirit, not lackadaisy, not complacent. Come on, say, so God, let's not, you know what I'm saying? Let's not just, you know, be sad in the spirit. He said, be strong in the spirit. That's daily, y'all. Strong in the spirit. Then he goes on and says this, y'all, in chapter four, verse 30, in the book of Ephesians now, he admonished them, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, now, don't quench the spirit. Don't reject the spirit. Come on, saints of God, don't cause uh, the, the, you know, grief and pain. As it relates, you know what I'm saying, causing the spirit of God to feel those, those things as it relates to the Holy Spirit. All right. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And, we and, and, and the way we grieve the Holy Spirit, y'all, simply is living a life of disobedience. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about perfection, y'all. I'm talking about, you know, lives when we decide that we just want to do what is wrong. We don't want to do what is right. You know what I'm saying? We don't, you know, we don't want to, you know, or we just don't want to study our Bible. We don't want to spend time with Jesus. We can be good Christians. However, we can neglect him on our journey. Yes, you faithful and tithes paying, you're going to church, you're, you know, you're doing all of these wonderful things, you're, you're teaching and things of that nature. However, say, so God, uh -huh. just by neglecting uh, uh, you know, time with Jesus, good time. With, I'm talking about intimate, uh, you know, that good time with, is, you know, is very intimate. Uh huh. Getting close to Jesus, spending some good quality time with him. And when we neglect that, y'all, we're grieving the Holy Spirit. All, you know, the thing what we're saying is y'all is this here. Not today, Lord. I don't want to seek after you for real. I don't got time to really pray with you today. Let me just say, let me just say a short prayer and a prayer, and let me get on the body here and do what I need to do. Let me just read a quick devotional text, two minutes, and let me go about my business. When God is asking you, uh huh, spend some quality time in the midst of 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 some time when you're able to spend time. You know, you're watching a movie. Spirit of God will touch your heart and say, "Look, read your Bible." Spend some time with me. But no, 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 not today. Lord, I got to watch this movie and I want to watch the next episode. You're grieving the spirit of the living God. God moves, saints of God. He wants a relationship with you and with myself. What do you say? And then the writer says, be filled with the spirit. Did I say that? Oh, yes. Be filled with the spirit. That is uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 from the NKJV. Be filled with the spirit, saints of God. So God wants us filled with the spirit of the living God. What do you say out there? <clears throat> All right, saints of God, let's move forward to our reading this evening. I want to pick up where we left off last week. And we are on page... 36, page 30. No, 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 not, not say, no, sorry about that, y'all. We are on, uh, okay, we're on page 35, th page 35, all right, page 35, at the very bottom, if you have your book, we're at the very bottom, and I want to begin to read in your hearing, uh, pick up where we left off last week, and I'm going to start off with the last paragraph at the bottom. The writer declares in this book, another aspect to consider is envy and strife, or, or as the NIV says, there's jealousy and, I cannot say this word, I get tongue twisted, quarreling, I think I might have said it right among you, uh, the word I like to use, arguing, arguing amongst you, uh, the, be the behavior proves to Paul uh, that the carnal church members are not living through God, spirit, but rather acting carnal. We read that text last week, y'all, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. And so I like, I like someone to read this text, that te uh, this text this evening, if you don't mind, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 3, 1 through 4. And I'll give you a few seconds. I'm going to finish reading this paragraph. But 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. I want to look at this text. And the Bible says, and if you got your Bibles with y'all, those listening, please look at the text as well. Don't look at me on the screen. Look, man, grab your Bibles, open them, that, that word of God, and, and you know what I'm saying, and, and, and follow along. What do you say out there? We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 4. Once again, uh, the behavior proves to Paul that the carnal church, the carnal church member are not living through God's spirit. Let me pause here. For those who was not online last week, uh huh. if you're wondering what do this word carnal church means, what is this, be, you know, who are these, who is this group of individuals? He said carnal church members. Last week, saints of God, in the last uh, last two weeks or so, we've been talking about the carnal man, and we've been talking about the natural man. We've been talking about the spiritual man. We recognize that the natural man is one who is not so much interested in spiritual things. He can care less about the Bible. He's not in tune with the word of God. I, I mean, look, man, he's not professional to be a Christian. The carnal man, as the writer now, huh? You know what I'm saying? Mention he talks about that carnal man or member is one who's hypocritical. Uh, you know they 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 proclaim to be children of God. They proclaim to be walking in God's will, walking in the truth. Come on, say to God, they get excited when a sermon is being preached, and they love good music and inspirational. You find them, you know what I'm saying, and 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 um leading out in 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 various of various of of uh, various of um of ministries and, and you know, say to God, they're active, they're in church. They may not even be all that active. They're just attending church, saying to God, and they, you know, say they do let individuals know every now and then they love Jesus, they're a child of God, and they may not be doing a whole lot of stuff that is crazy or none at all. Uh-huh. But yet, this writer says, uh-huh, these individuals are hypocritical. And he gives the reason why. Last week, we talked about that. He said that they're missing the, uh, the, uh, the the main ingredient. They're doing everything legit. They're, they're doing good. However, say so, God, they don't not, they, they lack a relationship with Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you have nothing. You're operating in the flesh. That's the carnal Christian. Child of God, on books, uh -huh. however, saints of God, they're lacking a relationship with Jesus, all right? That's the carnal Christian. They base, their, 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 their salvation is based on works and what they do for the kingdom of God. And sometimes, saints of God, it could just, it could just be based on, they, they, you know, they took their stand and was baptized and they think at the end of the day, that was good enough. I'm good. I don't need to push forward anyhow. I'm baptized in Jesus. Heaven is mine. So I can kind of live in a way I like to live to a certain degree. What do you say out there saying? So God. And then he says, the spiritual man is one who is filled with the spirit, led by the spirit. The spirit of Christ is dwelling in him. The spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, uh -huh, the spirit, the spirit of grace. All these wonderful names that describe uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, I like the word holy, is he who makes you holy. Not your works, not what you do, saying to God, even though they are important. But in the, the day, saying to God, you need Christ's holiness. You need the spirit of God on your life. Can't get into the kingdom of heaven without it, y'all. So you can do all the wonderful things. But however, saying to God, if you're not spending time with Jesus, if you're not wrestling with God, you're not, you're not having that good, um, you know, those good, those good, sweet moments with him. Come on, saying to God, with Jesus and growing in grace and knowing him. It doesn't matter what you bring to the table. As the pastor said the other day, she said, man, you can bring your A game. You can bring your A game, but it doesn't really mean anything. All our righteousness is still as filthy rags. Okay, so, so, God, so the carnal mind. So, so let's go back to the reading now. And so you know exactly what's going on. I needed to stop and share that with you. The carnal church member are not living through God's spirit but rather acting carnally, just like other people. They can act just like natural people, albeit in the religious packaging. Does this mean that tension is in the church? Stem mainly from carnal-minded church members. If somebody got 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, 1 through 4, can you please read that? 
If you don't mind this evening. Do we have one? I'm, okay. I'm on. I'm glad, Jim. All right. Glad to hear you. Glad you're here. And I, I'm glad Jim could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as uh, unto formal, even as unto babes in Christ. Yes. I have fed you with milk and not with me. For either two, ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. For ye are not for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and mm. walk as men? For for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollo, are ye not carnal? Amen. Amen, 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 amen. And so here, Paul's making a, a distinguish now uh -huh, uh, between basically two groups. You know what I'm saying? He basically talks about a worldly group, one functioning in the flesh, and then he talks about the spirit. However, St. Scott, in this particular passage, Paul is clear. He did let them know exactly what group they fall into. He said, you're carnal. You're carnal. You're operating in the flesh. Right? Amen? But what he declares now in the first, in the, in the chat, in the, well, you know, verse one, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mer infants, infants in Christ. Still worthy. That's the word I'm thinking about. Still worthy. Not, you know, still worthy. Still worthy. He mentioned that, I think, three times in the passage. Still worthy. Still worthy. Still worthy. Amen? At worldly. I mean, worldly. Stop about that, y'all. Worldly. 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 All right. And so, um, and so once again, y'all, it's two groups. Worldly, flesh, folks operating in the flesh, worldly, and then you have the spirit. He said, look, man, I can't even talk with you. You're not even functioning in the spirit of living God. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to pause there and I want to look at Jude real quick. And once again, saints of God, let me ask you a question. What is, before I move to Jude, uh-huh. What is uh what is two of the indicators that Paul mentioned that definitely can ind ind um, uh, identify us as identify us as children who was functioning not in the spirit but worldly? What was those two things he mentioned? Can someone mention it to me real quick? My uh, the reader who was just read, do you remember the two things that he mentioned? <laughs> There was two things, two behavior traits that he mentioned that identified them as being worldly. China. You, you remember the two? Remember now jealousy? China. And, and yeah, car, well, no, this is the kind of push. We understand they carnal, right? So what is the two things that he mentioned from the chapter to identify uh -huh, these things? You know, let them know, look, man, you're functioning as a carnal person. There was two things that he mentioned to to help us to, you know, um, to identify or I hope I'm saying that right. Um, he gave us two things that he mentioned uh -huh, that is connected to the carnal mind behavior. And and, you know, thanks to God, this is this is something that we need to watch for. Catch. And be clear on, because if we find ourselves executing or living our lives, uh huh, operating, uh, you know, what I'm saying up on this type of behavior, he mentioned jealousy is one. It was the first time they mentioned. And the second one was what, y'all? Tonight they are saying. Carlin. Carlin. Yes, Carlin. I think I said the name well, right, but I like you work arguing work amongst each saying, other. So, thanks to God, when we find that. ourselves, uh huh arguing amongst each other. We find ourselves jealousy, being jealous. Uh huh. That is an indicator that we're functioning under the carnal mind. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Sometimes we get so caught up about Sabbath keeping. We get so caught about eating clean foods versus unclean foods. I don't eat pork and I don't smoke cigarettes and I don't engage in alcoholism or saints God, I don't find, you know what I'm saying, I'm not into pornography or, you know, I pay my tithes. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, we, we, you know, we look at all these, these, these things, these sins, uh-huh, 
that's, you know what I'm saying, that is taking place throughout society. And because we find ourselves not doing many of these things, especially things, you know, say, Scott, once again, that we know that is sinful. Like, no, you ain't going to catch me doing that. However, deep down in our hearts, behind the mask, you know what I'm saying? Even with a pretty, a pretty smile, we can find ourselves being jealous at folks, uh-huh, when we're speaking to them, when they're in our presence. In my mind, man, I'm jealous of you. Now, they don't know it. They don't see it. Now, some cases saying, so God, uh-huh, we do express it, but a lot of times, uh-huh, some, some of these things don't get expressed. Now, I'm going to be like our pastor, man. I'm going to talk about Reg. I'm going to talk about Reg, not talk about nobody else but Reg. And I remember saying, so God, coming into the ministry in the beginning years of, 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 of coming into the ministry here in Allegheny East Conference, and, you know, I started 2006 in the publishing ministry, and I'll be honest with y'all, man, for a couple of years, there was a jealous bone within Reg. And one of the issues I had huh, with Reg now, I had to pray with God. I had to wrestle with God. I had to ask God to give me the victory over this thing. What, look, y'all, it took about two or three years huh, before I really wrestled with God. Maybe four years. Lord, I need victory. Lord, change my mind and my heart. And this was the issue that I was working with. I was dealing with y'all. I was, once again, I was jealous. I had a, a jealous bone. I, I couldn't stand seeing another minister uh, preach better than me, teach better than me. Come on, saints of God. Drive a nice ride better than me. But, you know, and it was other things as well. But however, saints of God, preaching was one of them. Now I'm talking about Reggie Reg. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about you elders who preach. Uh-huh. Some of the ladies at church may be jealous over someone, another female who may look better, may have a better, uh, a, a better looking shape or or has a husband and, and you don't or seem as though they got it going on in some form of fashion where you find yourself lacking. However, we come to church, happy Sabbath, knowing good well there is jealousy in you. And Paul says, saints of God, uh -huh, in this text, uh -huh, uh, when we're functioning in jealousy and arguing with one another, we're carnal. We're not walking in the spirit of the living God. And I praise God for this text. I praise God for his writings. And I praise God for the writer that he mentioned last week, that there is still hope when God reminds us and or shows us who we are, huh? if we're still in the land of living, if we're still around Christianity, we have a chance, come on, saints of God, to change from being carnal to spiritual once we recognize our condition. And so, saints of God, if you're struggling, huh, wondering where you are and, you know what I'm saying, and, and um, you know, uh, you know, am I on the right path? Take a break. Step outside of yourself. Look at your life and, and see if there any jealousy in you. Are you constantly arguing with folks on a regular basis, whether it be your spouse, your kids, your bit attitude, even at church, y'all? I ain't gonna lie, saying so, God. I've been around some of the saints there, man, and some of the, you know, some, of the, you know, I see some looks on their face, and 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 you know, and I just heard them say something to somebody just crazy not too long ago, and I said, oh no, I better stay away. From, uh, I, I can't get close. And we function, saints, God, in the name of Christianity, and we find ourselves in these two places, y'all. Come on now, y'all. We gotta cry on to the Lord. We got to wrestle with God. Lord, help me. Remember now, the writer says in the beginning of the book, if we're going to receive the, the first baptism of the Holy Spirit, if we're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, come on, saints of God, we got to call sin for what it is. We can't cover up our sin. We can't look over our sins, huh? We got to call that thing for what it is. If you're, if you're lusting, come on, saints of God, and you're married or not even married and you're watching things that you should not be watching, Lord, help me me if you're jealousy if you're running around with you know what i'm saying saying so god uh what's a you know uh uh hatred a spirit of unforgiveness knowing good and well say god god has called you to something greater and higher and higher standards y'all we got to take a break saints of god we need to stop playing church and call sin for what it is yes we're ugly yes we're messed up we don't have it together. And it's okay, y'all. We all 
stand at the, uh, uh, we all stand in the need of God's grace and his mercy. What do you say out there? We all are messed up spiritually and it's okay to acknowledge it and see where you are. But if we ignore our condition, if we act as though we're good, saints of God, before you know it, saints of God, you'll be functioning on our carnal mind and not walking in the spirit of the living God. The writer talks about it, calls it backslide. Well, I'm going to just pause there. So, saints of God, let's just move forward. I said enough. Uh, let's move forward. If someone want to comment, they can. Please tune on in. Tune in. Um, the floor is open for a second or two. If you want to comment. Uh, something I shared that struck uh, uh, um, something in your mind that you want to share, uh, you know, you want to, you know, add to what I've said. Look, the floor is open. Feel free to t uh, to, um, to tune in anytime, even while I'm reading. What do you say out there? All right. Once again, y'all, we want to get you guys engaged, involved. Uh -huh. All right. You can hit the unmute button. It's OK. We're not going to nail you to the cross. Uh -huh. This is your time, y'all. This is. Bible study. This is which not prayer meeting. Let's talk together. Let's reason. Let's let's you know. Let's go through this journey together, y'all. All right. Okay. Let's move forward. Now I want to read you. I, I like this in Jew. Okay. This is a. Uh, this is another passage, say to God, that speaks to the carnal mind. Uh huh. To the condition. He's talking to the saints of God. He's talking to those who is part of the church. They have been baptized and they call themselves uh, uh, children of God and, and here they are amongst God's people. And listen what Jude has to say. The brother declares, uh -huh, these people are the ones who are creating division, divisions, uh -huh, divisions. It's, it's not one or two say to God, they're constantly is in the place of just creating division, chaos, always bringing trouble. He says, creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts uh -huh, because they do not have God's spirit in them. Come on, saints of God. They do not have God's spirit in them. And because they are not driven by the spirit of a living God, uh huh. He said they're operating out of their natural instincts. What are they doing? The text is clear. These people are the ones who are creating division amongst you. Chaos, saints of God. Always trying to win someone to their side. Hear what they have to say. Push their agenda. Come on, saints of God. Behind the scenes, uh huh. Creating these little sets, what you call it, what you think, what, what, what you say out there. I call them spiritual game bangers, man. You know, we got these spiritual wars going on in the church at times. No peace. The church can't move. Folks can't get things. We can't get things. We can't get things done. The church remains the way it is. As a matter of fact, saints of God, because of these things, uh -huh, there are times where the church would die spiritually. To the point says again, you got to, you got to, uh, uh, you got to, you know, close the doors. And you look back into the history, huh? What led them to a place, huh, where the doors had to be closed? Uh -huh, is due to the fact that you'll find division, you'll find strife, envy, you'll find different sets in the church. Come on, saints so of God. There's a battle going on. And at the end of the day, saints of God, you will recognize, uh huh, the church was functioning under the carnal mind. What do you say? Spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. There's a quote when it talks about spiritual dead church. They say, uh, is the church is dying, dead, or decaying? Come on, saints of God. And they said that majority of the church in North America, come on, saints now, are in this group. Based on a poll that was taken, most churches are spiritually, they're dead, dying spiritually now, or decaying. There's no growth. There's no really no movement. There's no life. They have forgot the mission. They no longer focus on God's will. However, they're enjoying themselves. But eventually, saints to God, the church will die. They said that, uh, 
only about 10% of churches in North America is thriving. 90%, I do believe that's the quote, is dead, dying, or decaying. And once again, y'all, what are the issues? Jude says they are creating divisions. Paul says they're arguing amongst each other, can't get along. And he goes on to say, saints of God, their jealousy as well. And so back to my story, I praise God that he's given me victory over that. I no longer envy pastors, preachings and things of that nature, y'all. Uh, you know, definitely I want to get more, you know, I definitely want to continue to grow in 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 in, in, in sense of, 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 of just, you know, let them know, look, man, you did well. Praise God for your ministry, your preaching. I want to give, you know, I want, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to um congratulate them. Come on, say so God. Let them know, look, man, God has used you. And there's nothing wrong with that, saints of God. And I learned in my journey, the more we, we know we give individuals, I don't want to say their props, but when we let them know that they're doing wonderful, we praise God that God has blessed them. He is, you know, he's given them gifts and things of that nature, saints of God. We find ourselves being a little bit more appreciative, uh huh, what God has given to us and also what God has done for us. Yes, you may get all 10, uh, 10, what you call it? 10, um, 10 gifts and I'm only functional. I'm only, I'm, I'm only functioning on three. But the bottom line, he says to God, you can find joy in those three gifts. What do you say? And one of the ways we can do that is to, is, is to give people their props, man. Let them know that God, you know, God is using them and, and you praise God for their ministry and keep up the good work. Come on now, y'all. Can you imagine what our yeah. church home will be like and what the congregation will be like if we're constantly, saints of God, supporting one another. And we do a good job at Willow Grove. I praise God. I mean, some of the things that I've witnessed and saw in some of the program has been awesome. Letting the folks, young folks, know that we care about you. We hear you. We recognize you. And not only the young folks, but many others who have served in the church. And so let's continue on, y'all, with the good work, but individually, y'all, when it comes to individually, uh huh, when we are, you know, when we see folks who are doing better than we are in the area that we like to excel in, give them some props, man. Bless, you know, saying bless the Lord for them and, and, and let them know that, you know, look, man, keep doing what you're doing. All right. What do you say out there, saints of God? I didn't mean to go there, but we we're there. Okay. And this has truly have helped me on my journey as I continue to see God uh, for more of his Holy Spirit. Okay, y'all, let's continue on. Let's see what time we have. Um, okay, got a few minutes. Okay, now the writer continues in the book. And once again, y'all, please feel free to, 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 to jump on in. I need y'all, I need y'all to talk with Reg. All right, uh, just jump on in. All right, okay, here we go, y'all. Uh, where, where are we? Okay. <clears throat> All right. In Jesus' day, did not the Pharisees and Sadducees compete with one another? This means that already back then there was tension between the conservative, conservatives, and the liberals, progressives, uh huh, liberals slash progressives. One group, one group was very particular, and the other interpret things more loosely. Come on, saints of God. And we see this in our church, uh-huh. And also we can see this amongst other churches in the world. There's some church saints of God, they feel as though they don't need to keep God's commandments. They don't have to really keep, you know, the health laws and the day of rest and, and you know, and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera. All you need is to be baptized. Uh -huh. and, and they call this, uh, this doctrine, you know, be baptized into the church and take your stand and you, you are saved until Jesus comes. Once again, it makes no difference. Your lifestyle, what's going on, you are saved. They call this once saved, always saved. I don't know if you heard that before. If you heard that before, look, man, uh, you know, show me a hand there in the text message. Let me know that you are, are familiar with that theology, but it's a very popular theology. Once saved and always saved. They're very loose. They're very liberal. You don't have to do a whole lot, saints of God. And even in the Adventist church, when we don't believe once saved and always saved, but yet we can find ourselves being very loose and liberal in our church. The doctrines uh -huh, that we hold, 
true to our heart seems uh, to be losing its flavor. Uh -huh. uh, we don't see it as 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 importance of you know anymore. And so we continue on saying, so God is business as usual. And let me say this here. The Bible is clear, saying, so God, in I think Romans chapter sin, do we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible says, no, God forbid. We don't continue in sin because we're saved by grace. Come on, say, so God. God expects us to keep his laws and not just only 10 commandments, but we're talking about the word of God. We're talking about, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, uh, forgiveness. We're talking about saying sub God, uh, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, um, you know, you know, uh, 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 what's another good one saying sub God? You know, we, we talked about envy and jealousy. Come on, y'all. We talk about a spirit of, that is bent to do evil. There's so many things in the word of God that God expects, uh huh. that it is a principle. It's not a policy. It's not tradition. You don't negotiate it. Come on, saints of God. It doesn't change uh -huh, down the road some, somewhere because now we're living a different age. Oh, no, saints of God. God expects us to live out these things. Once again, saints of God, such as forgiving one another, praying for one another. You know, being a witness, sharing the everlasting God, that is a commission. It is a command. God has called us to share the word of God. And I have discovered, saints of God, on my journey, when the spirit of God is in you, there is a desire, huh? there is a motivation to share God's word uh -huh? in some way, form, or fashion. Oh, I'm not talking about be a Bible worker or knocking on doors as a literature evangelist. I'm not talking about saints of God that you'll be on your job preaching the gospel, man, from the word of God. Somehow, saints of God, on your journey, all I'm saying, saints of God, there will be uh -huh, a spirit of, I have to let folks know about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us will have that desire. No one is exempt. You can't blame, you can't put this on the pastor, on the elders. Come on, saints of God. Everybody is called Boy, girl, grandmother, grandfather, mommy, daddy, sick, not sick, crippled, blind. It makes no difference. The condition that you're in, you're still called to share the word of God. What do you say, saints so of God? In some form and fashion, some way, well, I guess I'm going to leave it like that. I think I might get ready to mess up that phrase. But y'all know what I'm talking about out there. What do you say out there? And so, saints, God, even when it comes to conservatives, the writer is clear. Both were convinced that they had the correct Bible interpretation and attitude. But Jesus showed us that both groups were carnal, meaning not filled with the Holy Spirit. The same thing is possible today, y'all. Conservative Christians can also be carnal Christians. Yeah, I'm talking about those who wear long dresses and black dresses and the elders who are conservative in their, in their gray and black suits. Uh huh. Can't come in here and stand in the pulpit without a suit before you can preach. There are churches out there in our own denomination, saints of God. You cannot step into the pulpit to preach, uh huh, if you don't have a suit on. You got to have a suit. No one can step into this pulpit. I remember saying, so God, huh, huh, before I attended Oakwood, I was part of this group called OMH, Operation of Ministry of Healing. It was a street ministry in this. And as a matter of fact, I was part of this group before I got baptized, uh, witnessing for the Lord. And sh shortly after, saying, so God, I got baptized into the church. And I remember saying, so God, we attended this thing called Fritnik up in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, saints of God, it was a place where the college students would take off a spring break and they will come for a week and, or, and they will, you know, it would be party and sex and drugs and all kind of foolish is going on. And I remember saints of God, uh -huh, as we, when we arrived there in Atlanta, Georgia, it took place in Atlanta, we are home church and I'm going to share to you what that church is because it is what it is. It was the Bereans church, uh-huh. And we were staying in the house across the street from uh, the building they just uh, occupied. Uh -huh. 
And there we was, uh, we got to the church, we dropped our, well, before we dropped our things off into the building, we need to connect with someone there in the building now um, that had access to the keys and it was supposed to kind of set us up there in, you know, say across the street there at the church so we can take our things out of our cars and things of that nature. But before we did that, saints of God, we wanted to worship. And did you not know this, y'all? This was a few years ago now. This was in uh, when I joined uh, probably around 2000, no, 1997. I was baptized around 1998. I think it was around 1998. I was baptized in 1998. I, I believe it was around 1997, 1996, 1997, somewhere around there. Uh -huh. And watch this, y'all. We get to the church. Once again, we're looking for the contact person. However, we wanted to worship, y'all. Cause we got there doing divine worship. And did you not know that they told us that we could not come to the come inside the building dressed like this? We are, we had our uniforms on, we had our operation ministry shirt, we had sweatpants on, y'all. Man, we was ready to go to work, but yet we wanted to stop by, unload our things, enjoy the worship real quick, y'all, and move forward. And right now, you can't come up in here like that. Conservatism. Caught up in the dress and how we should conduct ourselves and how should we should come into the house of the Lord. And the writer says, y'all, and the writer said that these individuals are carnal. Are carnal. And he explains why. He said, unfortunately, these people do. Unfortunately, people today often look through the glasses. Gla uh, uh oh, he said, unfortunately. People today often look through the glasses of conservatives, conservative or liberal slash progressive. The average, no, the advantage is that the obs, obs, uh, the uh, uh, observer comes off well. However, with the biblical classification of carnal, carnal or spiritual, we are challenged to take a spiritual inventory. We have to look in with ourselves, uh -huh, whether you're. Uh, conservative or liberal? He said, look, y'all, we got to pause now. We got to look within ourselves. We got to take some up some inventory, right? Spirit. Now, he said, take a spiritual inventory. We should do this for our own good. Consider what God clearly tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8 from the NKJV version. This is what he said, y'all. This is heavy right here. What good, no, whatever a man sows, that he will also weep. For he who sowed to his flesh will weep. Okay, so to his flesh will of the flesh weep corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit weep everlasting life. Come on, saints of God. Once again, the spirit of God is not dwelling in you and you are a good conservative Christian. Come on now or liberal Christian, what you're sowing into your spiritual, well, you, it, it seems to be spirituality, but what you're sowing, saints of God, into the ground, talking about yourself, is the flesh. It's not spiritual. If Christ is not connected to, to uh, the spirit of Christ through the Holy Spirit, if it's not connected to your journey, saints of God, everything that you're doing is definitely functioning out of the flesh. So when you sow into the ground, flesh, come on, saints of God, you're going to weep the flesh. That's the reason why, saints of God, amongst God's people, huh, we're struggling with uh, 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 with jealousy and envy. We, we're struggling with getting the, the victory or overcoming those things. That's why we find ourselves arguing with one another and causing division. That's the reason why, saints of God, we cannot forgive. We have a hard time forgiving. We're holding grudges and we constantly are upset and mad. We can't let things go, huh? In the name of Christianity. So we come to church on Sabbath. We're looking pretty. Happy Sabbath. We're smiling. But at the end of the day, yo, we're sowing uh -huh, into our spirituality uh -huh, seeds of flesh. And what's going to grow from my experience as we continue the journey, saints of God, is the fruits of the flesh. That's the reason why we're struggling, y'all. And we make excuses why we can't overcome sin. We make excuses why we're dropping the ball. Well, I don't know what happened.
and not hearing you. Yes, can you hear me? No. Okay, well, all right, well, let me just continue on then. We're going to go ahead and pray, and we're just stop there this evening, because I can't see you. I don't hear, um, oh, oh, I don't know what happened to my computer. Okay. We can see you, Elder Raj. We can see and okay. hear you. Okay. Well, let me just, let me just, I'm not going to mess with anything because I don't want to kick myself out. So I'm going to leave things like the way they are. I'm not able to see you, but you can see me. Look, saints of God, we're going to just pause there. And I just want to say, look, y'all, let's continue to do better. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with God. Let's, you know, let's constantly, you know, uh, uh, you know, reevaluate our spirituality, our walk with God. Uh-huh. And I, and I want to encourage y'all say, so God, uh -huh. I pray by God's grace that you'll grab hold some of the things that the book mentioned, that I mentioned, saying, so God, that, that will cause us to continue to walk as carnal Christians, uh huh, that will put us in that place. And so let's forgive, let's, you know, let's ask God to give us victory over, you know, jealousy and envy and, and give us a, a heart of, of, of love and care and, 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 and appreciation, man. Appreciate, you know, what people are doing and how well they're doing. Let them know that, that you praise God for them and, and God is using them. Let's continue on saying to God, just living uh, according to the will of God. And also let's continue to pray for the spirit of the living God. Lord, we need him. I mean, pray for the spirit of the living God. We need him, y'all. We can't do nothing without Jesus. Even when you are on your A game and you're doing everything correctly and you're living according to the will of God and everybody can see that, that you are a good, devout Christian. However, saints of God, without the spirit of the living Christ, you're still sowing into the flesh. What do you say? And you need, you know, we need to be in the spirit of God. So when we sow, saints of God, he that sow in the spirit, the Bible, what the Bible says once again, and I'm going to close this with this text, and then I'm going to pray. Um, uh, he says, uh -huh, whatever a man sows, that he will also weep. For he who sows to the flesh will, uh, will of the flesh weep corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will, will of the spirit weep everlasting life. Come on, saints of God. Let's the spirit of God be a part of our lives. What you're saying? Let's what you know, and let's continue to work uh -huh, along with the spirit of God. And so let's continue to invite Him in our lives daily. What do you say? Uh, let's pray, loving Father. We thank you once again for life and grace. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to be once again, Lord, in the land of the living. We praise God now, God, that you have kept us throughout the week, Lord. We pray e this evening, Lord God, for our youth. We ask God now that you bless and keep them, that you will watch over them, Lord. We Pray this evening, Father God, Lord, that you will continue, Lord God, to speak to their hearts. And those youth, Lord God, who's on the fence, Lord, has not given their lives to you. Lord, we ask now, Jesus, that you will press in even harder now. Continue to knock on the door. Lord, give them no rest, no peace until they accept you, until they come to their senses like Jonah. Mm hmm that the life will be rocky and uh, the, 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 they will have no peace until, though God, they, you know what I'm saying, until they turn their lives over to you, where they'll be able to find true rest and peace for their soul. Let me, Father, I ask now, God, that you continue to be with the elderly, Lord. Continue to watch over them and bless and keep them this way. Continue, Lord God, to give them the strength that they need to get through each day. Yes, loving Father, definitely they are a little more tired, and uh, 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 Lord God, and uh, Lord God, and they may have a little bit more uh, uh, health issues. Not all, but Lord, we understand as we age, Father God, Lord, these bodies are waxing, Lord God. They're, uh, you know, they're deteriorating, you know, God, at the end of the day. And so, Father God, Lord, we know, uh, uh, Lord God, that the issues are at hand. And so, Lord, for those who are struggling at this, Give them healing power. I mean, give them healing. Uh, give them grace, Lord God. Continue to be the lifter of their head in the midst of their affliction, Lord. I pray now, Lord God, that you be with those who are doing well. Continue to, to provide and bless them, Lord God. I pray, God, today that they will just be more about your business, Lord. If they're doing well financially, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you move on their hearts, that they will be, they will give a little bit more and they will support those who may not be supporting, Lord God, that they will pour into the gospel ministry that they will look after and support those who are less fortunate, may not have the things that they need due to fact, the fact of, of lack of means. 
So, Father God, Lord, give them spiritual eyesight. Lord, give them a vision. Lord God, allow them to be able to see uh -huh, where there's a need. And, Lord God, push upon their heart, Lord God, to give. Lord, this is one of the means by which, Lord, we are able to receive more of your spirit. If we hold back, Father, and not give, and hold on to our finances and hold on to our resources, Father, and, and, and remain where we are and overlook those who are struggling. Lord, you will not pour out your spirit upon that upon that upon us, Lord. So please, Father, move on our hearts, help us to come up a little higher, be with the church at large, each home. Continue, Lord God, to provide and grant them what they stand in need of. Lord, you know all things. We don't know, but you know all things. You see the hearts. You see the struggles. You see what they're going through. So please, 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 Father God, Lord, drop by. Continue, Lord God, to pay a visit. Continue to work things out, Lord God. Look beyond our faults, Lord. Continue to provide for our needs. We are grateful, Lord God, that we serve a God who reigns on the just and the unjust. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. And now, Father God, Lord, before I end this prayer tonight, be with the building project, the new church, Lord God. We, uh, Lord God, you know the desires of our hearts, Lord God. Uh -huh. and so we pray, God, now that you will open doors and you allow us to be able to receive this building. But help us, Father God, Lord, not to, to get this building for ourselves, but Lord, help us to utilize it, Lord God, to hasten the kingdom, to do full-fledged ministry, to, I mean, hasten your kingdom, Lord, and do full-fledged ministry, and Lord God, and reach out to a community that is in need of your grace. We are told, Lord God, that the majority of the people in the community in North America are losing faith in God, How, um, or not losing, well, yes, that is true, and Father God, Lord, they're no longer interested in coming into a building, but help us, Father God, Lord, to be able to change the minds of the people. Help us, Lord God, to be able to do your work to its fullest, Lord God. That is that is persuasive, that is attractive, that is that is full of love and care. Help us to best represent you. And for us to be able to do that, we have to have the spirit of living God in our lives. So, loving Father, we place our hands into your hands once again. Do as you see fit. Pour out your spirit upon us once again this evening, Father God, Lord. And we love you. Praise God for you. Keep us, Father. We're not able to keep ourselves. In Christ's name we pray. You want us out of my voice can say amen and amen and amen. Look, y'all, we'll see y'all next week. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again. Y'all have a wonderful night.